Thank you guys so much. That was, that was a beautiful way to bring in a new season of um, the church year as we are in Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And typically this is the first Sunday of what we call the season of Epiphany. And it's in a time when in the universal church we explore scriptures, different scriptures in which Jesus reveals himself. So Mary, Did You Know is a very appropriate song because it's about, did you know who Jesus was? And, and then our scriptures in the next few weeks are Jesus revealing who he is to the world, much like he was revealed to the Magi when they came to worship him. So today we're going to hear how Jesus was publicly revealed as the Son of God when he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. We're also starting a new sermon series called First Steps. First Steps. We're spending if you remember this year in the Gospel of Matthew, so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to hear some of Jesus' first steps in public ministry, ministry to a wider world. But first, um, so I'm going, I'm going to the eye doctor this week. A- anybody ever been to the eye doctor? <laughs> All right, I see some of you got the equipment. A- anybody ever been an eye doctor? <laughs> Well, um, as I was reading this week's scripture, I got to imagining a scenario that, that, that I hope doesn't happen when I visit the eye doctor. So what would you do if you're, you're hanging out in, in the waiting room and, and, and you're on your phone, you know, like we do, you're playing, I don't know, what, what's a popular phone game now? Ninja. You're playing Fruit Ninja, you're slicing some watermelons, and you're sitting in the waiting room, you're playing Fruit Ninja, and, and they call your name, the doctor will see you now, and they lead you back to the room with the weird Star Wars interrogation robot chair, and you're, you're glancing at the wall, as I do, trying to remember, you know, memorize the letters on the wall while you still got your glasses on, and, and that's why you don't notice that, that the eye doctor is actually sitting in the interrogation chair. And, and there she is, and, and she looks up at you expectantly and says, I'm so glad you're here. I've been waiting for you for so long. I've got this weird thing going on with my left eye. Everything is blurry, and I need you to examine my eye. What would you do? I mean, if you're like me and you've never had biology 101, and your eye doctor is asking you to examine their eyes, if you're like me, you'd... (laughs) I'm a dad. If you're like me, (laughs) you'd probably be like, hey, slow down. I, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't train for this. I'm not equipped for this. You should be examining me. Well, that's exactly what happened in Jesus, to Jesus in today's story. Well, I mean, not exactly. Jesus didn't have an eye doctor. I mean, he might, actually, he was probably like the world's greatest eye, eye doctor, right? You don't even need surgery. You can just see again. But this is the first time in our story today that, that we've seen Jesus since his family fled from King Herod to Egypt to keep him safe. And he's 30 now in the Gospel of Matthew. He comes to, the, to see John the Baptist out in the wilderness. John's out baptizing crowds in the Jordan River. And, and Jesus wants John to baptize him. And, and John's like, whoa, you're the eye doctor here, or the, the soul doctor here. Not, not me. I didn't sign up for this. It, well, here, here's, how, here's how Matthew puts it. Matthew writes in three, Matthew 3, verses 13 through 17. It says, At that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. And, and John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me. And Jesus answered, allow me, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. And when Jesus was baptized, he immediately, he came out of the water. Heaven was opened up to him and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, 
whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are blessed to be counted among your children. May you be pleased with us. Lord God, may we make you happy. May we feel your love even now in this place. May we hear your voice much like Jesus did in the Jordan so many years ago. Speak to us, O God. Pour out your spirit upon us. Amen. So so you heard the parallel there, right? Jesus, in his first public act of ministry recorded in Matthew, Jesus comes to John and asks John to baptize him. And, And John has been out in the wilderness waiting. Like the wilderness is like one big giant waiting room, only no magazines. And John's been out in the wilderness waiting and preparing everyone for the Messiah to come. And the Messiah comes and he walks up to John and he says, Hey, John, it's me, I'm I'm the Messiah. Can you baptize me? And John says, What? I need to be baptized by you. And yet you come to me? You're the Messiah. You're the soul doctor. You should be baptizing me. And then John, and in saying that, he kind of points out like this big, sticky, theological, brain-hurting question that, that people have pondered for literally thousands of years. Why did Jesus need to get baptized? Well, let's, let's maybe start with our own, our own personal answers to that question. Then we'll get to Jesus' answer. Who here has been baptized? A good, a good number of us. Yeah. So, so why, did, why did y'all get, get, get baptized? There, you know, maybe it just, I fell and got wet. <laughs> now, if you're like me, maybe it was an easy answer. Like for me, I, I didn't have a choice in the matter. Why did you get baptized? Because my parents handed me over to the minister, and the minister splashed me with water, and then I cried. That's why I got baptized. I, I was kind of like Chase when, when he was baptized by Luke. Y'all know Chase, the, the dog, Chase? Yeah? Well, here, here, this is Luke the baptizer. This is... Huh? You ready? Yeah. Ready for what? The baptism. Oh. I did get the baptism, but the water. Lord, get chased. Chased and fell off the load. Against the water. You sure? Luke. Wow. Are you sure Chase wants to get baptized? Yeah, he needs the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he needs to the water. Obedience to the command. I baptize you, dear Father, dear Son, dear Holy Ghost. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that kid rocks, man. <laughs> Isn't he awesome? Like, I pray he never loses the Holy Ghost. But here's the thing, right? Like, some of us, I was like Chase. Like, did Chase have any say in the matter as to whether or not he got baptized? No. No, he did not. If he probably had to say, he'd probably be like, no, soggy dogs are sorry dogs. I don't need to get baptized. But Luke knew, like my parents knew, that Chase needed to be baptized because Luke knew Chase needed who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So how many of you then got baptized because you knew you needed the Holy Ghost? Like you got baptized because you chose to be baptized. Yeah, some of us here, like, you wanted to give your life to Jesus because you wanted your sins washed away because you wanted to put the past in the past and get moving on up to heaven because you were ready to surrender your life. Or or maybe you were in this camp. Anybody, like, the, the I got baptized when I was eight because all the other kids in my Sunday school were getting baptized when they were eight, and I didn't want to be the one who disappointed my parents or be the only one who didn't get baptized when I was eight, or everyone else is doing it, 
so why don't I, or everyone else is getting born again at camp every summer, so I might as well get born again again. (laughs) By the way, I'm not passing judgment on any of these, because for starters, right, we're a denomination that baptizes infants who don't have a say in the matter. Because we believe that baptism is a sign act, a sign of an act that we don't have a choice about. The act is that Christ died for us, that he died for our sins, that he defeated death, that he paved the way for eternal life, and that grace of God in Christ is already within every one of us. Whether we want it or not, you don't have a what? Choice. And so when we baptize It's a sign of God's act of saving grace through Jesus Christ, a grace that abides within each and every one of us. And if you want to wait, that's all right. We'll baptize you when you're eight or when you're 80 and you realize that you need the Holy Ghost. If you want to wait for that moment you decide to follow Jesus and give your life to him, that's okay too. And by the way, even if you were baptized as an infant, You still got to give your life to Jesus and say the words and profess your faith. So what about this, everybody else is doing it, so why don't we, baptism? Actually, that brings us back to Jesus' answer to John, because in a way, that is his answer to John. When John says, you need to be baptizing me, Jesus says, No, I mean, okay, so he uses some highfalutin, son of God, theological words, but in essence, they get to the same point. Jesus gets baptized because everybody else was doing it. There were crowds of people like you and me getting baptized. Here's what I mean. In the front? In the, well, that's Dolores O'Riordan on your right on the couch. And then the dude in the front, that looks like me in the 90s. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> but here's what I mean about everybody, about the cranberries. After John protests and, or, and says, no, you should be baptizing me, Jesus answers, allow me to be baptized now. And by the way, if Jesus ever says to you, allow me, and now in the same sentence, just do it. Allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. Now, we know Jesus didn't need to be baptized for his sins to be washed away because Jesus didn't have any of those. We know Jesus didn't need to get baptized as a symbol that he accepted Jesus because he was Jesus. And we know Jesus didn't need to get baptized to receive the Holy Ghost because Jesus is one with the Holy Spirit, just like he's one with the Father. No, Jesus says, I need to be baptized. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. And the word righteous, by the way, this is a huge biblical word, especially in the Old Testament. In Greek, it's diakosune. And biblical righteousness has this sense of, in, in simplest terms, righteous. When we see righteousness, it's about writing relationships making broken relationships right again, whole again. So remember, a couple of weeks ago, we heard that Joseph planned to quietly divorce Mary because he was a righteous man. He was trying to make this relationship that had been broken right because it would be wrong for him to marry Mary, right, Um, in God's eyes because she's carrying, in, in his view, another man's child, His relationship with God would be broken in marrying her. So by divorcing Mary, he could make that relationship right again. And because he believed that Mary had broken her relationship with him by being with another man, by divorcing her, their relationship could be made right again. Righteous, made whole. When we get baptized, there's this sense that we're making our own relationship, our broken relationship with God, what? Right, whole. Again, we are washing away our sins, the things that we've done to separate, to break our relationship with God so that it will once again be made right. 
But when Jesus says, I need to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness, there's something deeper at play. His baptismal waters take us all the way back to Genesis, almost to the waters of creation. When Adam and Eve ate the apple, they sinned and they broke the world, and everyone's relationship with God was broken. Jesus needs to be baptized to fulfill what righteousness? All righteousness, everyone everything to make the world right again all of it every broken thing every broken person every broken heart mended all of creation made right righteous and so to do that jesus god in flesh came to live among us to be born of a woman like us to breathe like us eat like us put his pants what he i don't know if he wore he always wore a robe in the pictures they took of him um but to to go to the eye doctor just like us, to die like us. And today we remember that he was baptized like who? Us. You see, don't forget that that John the Baptist had been out there baptizing people for, for quite some time. Like, he wasn't, by the way, in case you were wondering, he wasn't baptizing Christians, like, because there weren't any then right? Not yet. He was baptizing Jews who were ready for something new, who wanted to turn away from what they were doing and get back to doing what God wanted them to do. Jews who were ready to join a movement, right? John's movement. Don't forget, John had a movement. He had followers. Remember, they were hanging out and talking to Jesus's followers, and some of John's followers became Jesus's followers. And and what did Jesus do? Jesus, the Son of God, the man that John had just said was so great. John said, there is a guy coming who is so great, I'm not even fit to untie his shoes. Like, I'm not even fit to be a servant to this guy. And then that guy shows up, someone who's far greater than I. The kingdom of heaven is coming, and that kingdom of heaven shows up and says, hey, John, can you baptize me? I know you don't even think you can untie my shoes, but I want you to baptize me. Can you make me a part of your movement? Can you baptize Emmanuel into your movement? God with you. Because God wants to be, I want to be a part of what you're doing. God wants to be a part of what we're doing doing. God wants to join us, and by joining us, God then invites us to join him. Because in those next few moments, when when John is baptizing Jesus, Jesus transforms John's movement because he reveals that he is the Son of God. When Jesus was baptized, he comes out of the water. That's why they all had long hair back in the day, so that it would The driplets of water would come off when they came out of the water. So Jesus comes out of the water, and in doing so, heaven was opened up, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. I love those words. I love this translation. It's a common English Bible. This is my Son, whom I dearly love find happiness in him. This person, John, who just joined your movement, this person is the son of God who is God, and now he's joined with what you're doing, and what you're doing is transformed by God into what he is going to do. Jesus has forever changed the movement, inviting us in turn to join him, which, of course, brings us back to the optometrist's office. Because here's the thing, I think sometimes we get obsessed with how our baptism points backwards. Like our baptism is just all about the things we've already done (laughs) and washing those things away. Like our baptism is all just about the things in our past, our mishaps, our mistakes, our misperceptions, our sin. It's, it's It's about us being made righteous, and that is certainly true. But baptism is not just about the past. It's also a holy right now moment, right? A moment of new birth right now, of new life right now. And I think most of us, we'd agree with that too, right? 
But I think too often we forget that baptism is also about us joining Christ's movement. That we're becoming a part of Christ's movement, just like Jesus became a part of John's movement and transformed it. We become of Christ, part of Christ's movement, and he transforms us. Us becoming a part of a movement to seek not just our own personal, individual righteousness, but what kind of righteousness? All righteousness. That we become a part of this movement to write the relationship of the whole world to God. In a sense, it's like Jesus saying to us, hey, let's do this eye doctor thing together, this soul doctor, this righteousness thing together. God with us. Only, while you may not feel equipped to doctor people's eyes, most of us might not feel equipped to doctor people's eyes, the amazing thing is that through baptism, you can trust that you are equipped to join Jesus' righteousness movement. Because, to quote our friend Luke the baptizer, just like Chase, when you were baptized, you got the who? The Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Spirit. You are equipped to do what God has called you to do, what Jesus has invited you to do, what Jesus wants to do alongside you. Because you've been equipped. You, you don't have to go to the top of optometry school in the nation. You just got to get in the water. And you're equipped by God the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit to join Jesus in this righteous, righteous mission. There's a lot of meaning packed into our baptism. That's why it's a sacrament. That's why it's sacred and holy. But we can't forget that in our baptism, we become part of what Jesus is doing, this Jesus movement. We accept our mission, his mission, which means that we have to change our lives. We have to change our relationships with other people in the world to write them and do these relationship writing righteous things. We have to remember that we've been equipped to do those things. We've got the power. I'm in the 90s today. That's a song too. We're not baptized into a club where we get to come and eat and hang out and look at all the people who aren't invited to our club. No. Just like Jesus' human body was baptized, when we're baptized, we become part of the body of Christ. So I want to end our time today with the two questions we're going to be asking each week this year. And the first one is easy. You should all get this, all right? Question number one, what did Jesus do? He got baptized. baptized. All right, that is easy. The second question we're going to be asking ourselves each week is, now that I know what Jesus did, what will I do? It's not always as easy. I mean, maybe for some it's as simple as, I'll get baptized. <laughs> If Jesus is doing it, why don't I? Now's the perfect time. Join the movement. Get equipped. If you've been thinking about baptized, getting baptized, but you just haven't done it, look, it's as easy as this. We have those white connect cards in the prayer section on the back. You can just write, baptize me! <laughs> Exclamation point, And put it in the offering basket, and we will get with you, and we will hang out with you, and talk with you, and share with you. And make it happen. But if you've already been baptized, whether you chose it for yourself or someone else chose it for you, today is also the perfect time to remember what that baptism means. That you are God's child. That God does love you. That you, even if you're making the rest of the world grumpy, <laughs> That you make God, what, happy. And that you have joined a righteous movement. And it's not a movement if you're not, what, moving. <laughs> so today is also the perfect day 
to get moving again. Amen? Amen.